Welcome back everybody. Um, yesterday we went through chapters two and three of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Today we are just going to be reading chapter four, so make sure you get your books out and ready and turn to page 15 for chapter four. Um, give me a second to turn my computer around and then you guys are going to read along in your books while I read it out loud. And then once we're done, you're going to go onto Google Classroom and complete the reading work for Wednesday, okay? So give me just one second to turn my computer around. All right, so we are on chapter four, making our way through. Okay, so follow along while I read out loud. Chapter four. The Secret Workers The next evening, Grandpa Joe went on with his story. You see, Charlie, he said, not so very long ago, there used to be thousands of people working in Mr. Willy Wonka's factory. Then one day, all of a sudden, Mr. Wonka had to ask every single one of them to leave, to go home, and to never come back. But why? asked Charlie because of spies. Spies? Yes. All the other chocolate makers, you see, had begun to grow jealous of the wonderful candies that Mr. Wonka was making, and they started sending in spies to steal his secret recipes. The spies took jobs in the Wonka factory, pretending that they were ordinary workers, and while they were there, each one of them found out exactly how a certain special thing was made. And did they go back to their own factories and tell? asked Charlie. They must have, answered Grandpa Joe, because... Soon after that, Fickle Gruber's factory started making an ice cream that would never melt, even in the hottest sun. Then, Mr. Prodnose's factory came out with a chewing gum that never lost its flavor, however much you chewed it. And then Mr. Slugworth's factory began making, making candy balloons that you could blow up into huge sizes before you popped them with a pin and gobbled them up. And so on, and so on. And Mr. Willy Wonka tore his beard and shouted, This is terrible! I shall be ruined! There are spies everywhere! I shall have to close the factory! But he didn't do that, Charlie said. Oh, yes, he did. He told all the workers that he was sorry, but they would have to go home. Then, he shut the main gates and fastened them with a chain. And suddenly, Wonka's giant chocolate factory became silent and deserted. The chimneys stopped smoking, the machines stopped whirring, and from then on, not a single chocolate or candy was made. Not a soul went in or out and even Mr. Willy Wonka himself disappeared completely. Months and months went by, Grandpa Joe went on, but still the factory remained closed, and everybody said, poor Mr. Wonka, he was so nice, and he made such marvelous things, but he's finished now, it's all over. Then something astonishing happened. One day, early in the morning, thin columns of white smoke were seen to be coming out of the tops of the tall chimneys of the factory. People in the town stopped and stared. What's going on, they cried. Someone's lit the furnaces. Mr. Wonka must be opening up again. They ran to the gates, expecting to see them wide open and Mr. Wonka standing there to welcome his workers back. But no. The great iron gates were still locked and chained as securely as ever, and Mr. Wonka was nowhere to be seen. But the factory is working, the people shouted. Listen, you can hear the machines. They're all whirring again. And you can smell the smell of melting chocolate in the air. Grandpa Joe leaned forward and laid his long, bony finger on Charlie's knee, and he said softly, But most mysterious of all, Charlie were the shadows in the windows of the factory. The people standing on the streets outside could see small, dark shadows moving about behind the frosted glass windows. Shadows of whom? said Charlie quickly. 
That's exactly what everybody else wanted to know. The place is full of workers, the people shouted, but nobody's gone in. The gates are locked. It's crazy. Nobody ever comes out either. But there was no question at all, said Grandpa Joe, that the factory was running. And it's gone on running ever since for these last ten years. What's more, the chocolates and candies have it's been turning out have become more fantastic and delicious all the time. And of course now, when Mr. Wonka invents some new and wonderful candy, neither Mr. Ficklegruber nor Mr. Prodnose, nor Mr. Slugworth, nor anybody else is able to copy it. No spies can go into the factory to find out how it is made. But Grandpa, who, cried Charlie, who is Mr. Wonka using to do all the work in the factory? Nobody knows, Charlie. But that's absurd. Hasn't someone asked Mr. Wonka? Nobody sees him anymore. He never comes out. The only things that come out of that place are chocolates and candies. They come out through a special trap door in the wall, all packed and addressed, and they are picked up every day by post office trucks. But Grandpa, what sort of people are they that work in there? My dear boy, said Grandpa Joe, that is one of the greatest mysteries of the chocolate-making world. We know only one thing about them. They are very small. The faint shadows that sometimes appear behind the windows, especially late at night when the lights are on, are those of tiny people, people no taller than my knee. There aren't any such people, Charlie said. Just then, Mr. Bucket, Charlie's father, came into the room. He was home from the toothpaste factory, and he was waving an evening newspaper rather excitedly. Have you heard the news? he cried. He held up the paper so that they could see the huge headline. The headline said, Wonka Factory to be opened at last to lucky few. All right, so we are done with chapter four. Go on to Google Classroom, just like we have been doing, and complete the reading assignment for today. Remember to go back into the passage and um, find your answers in there to make sure that you are doing it correctly. Turn it in once you're done. Let us know if you have any questions. We are here to help, okay?